It's Dr. Ann Zink. It's October 15th and providing a brief update about what's happening in the state of Alaska and COVID. I'm going to briefly review our acceleration of cases, talk about hospitalizations and deaths, as well as talk about vaccine treatment and some of the amazing science and hope and future that we see in the near future. So in the state of Alaska, we have 153 new cases today. They continue to be predominantly in the Anchorage and Fairbanks area, although we definitely see a major acceleration in the Bethel and Bethel Census area. We see a scattering of cases around the state and encourage you to take a look at our dashboard for additional information. We continue to be in the high alert level with just over 20 cases per 100,000. And you can take a look on our dashboard to look at your specific regional levels to see where you're at with the number of new cases average over 100,000 people per day. And again, encourage you to take a look at that to see what's happening over time. Some regions have started to settle down like the Juneau area and other ones are really starting to pick up including Mats Matsu and the Kenai while Fairbanks and Anchorage remain high. Another number that we closely follow is the percent positive. So currently we have just over 4% of our tests are positive over the last seven days. We've done over half a million tests in the state and it's been good to see some of our highest hit areas, including Fairbanks, starting to settle down on the percent positive. On this next slide, you'll be able to see Anchorage versus Fairbanks is percent positive. The purple line is Fairbanks percent positive, and you can see that's been coming down. It is important to note that there's free confidential testing offered seven days a week outside of the airport in Fairbanks from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. every single day, and continue to find ways to expand testing options in Fairbanks. You can see Anchorage, which also has free accessible testing, has had a slight increase, but not the same sort of bump. The other thing that I wanted to point out on this slide is on the left slide, those red and green graphs, that is the number of cases that you can see in the Anchorage and Fairbanks region over the same time. When we stop testing, we start to not see the cases. Testing's kind of like uh, having brights on in the car. It helps us to know where we're going. And the faster we're going, the faster we need those brights and the more testing we're doing. So as we see this increase in cases across the state, we really need to make sure that we're increasing testing to identify cases early so that you know if you may have been infected with COVID so you can let your close contacts and we can work with you to let your close contacts know that they have COVID so they really have the power to stop the disease. On this next slide, you can see our data based on race and ethnicity, including who has required hospitalization as well as hospitalizations by age. Our hospitalizations continue to be predominantly in the 60 to 79 year old age group, but we have seen hospitalizations in most age groups, including five children. Moving on to the next slide, this is some information that we had shared previously, but this is the national trend in the hospitalizations and deaths over time, both in Alaska as well as in the United States. And you can see in general that has been a trend downwards. It's been great to see and we think it's a series of multiple things, including testing younger people, identifying cases quickly, finding better ways to keeping it at long-term care facilities, as well as better medical options, as well as treatment options. And with that, I wanted to talk a little bit about what we know about COVID and the kind of different phases of COVID. So in this next slide, we really have these different stages, the prevention stage, the viral stage, the inflammatory stage, and the post-inflammatory stage. The prevention stage is the things you can do to take care of your health now making sure that you're not vitamin D deficient, making sure that your chronic medical conditions are well controlled. Obesity can play a big factor in COVID. And so making sure that you have appropriate weight and doing what you can for weight loss can make a big difference in the setting of COVID-19. So there's a lot of things that we can do for our health early on. Again, staying active, eating well, as well as being mentally and physically well make a big difference. Then it's a matter of preventing getting COVID. And we've talked about these things a lot, avoiding the three Cs, congregate settings, close contacts, and confined spaces, and doing the three Ws, washing your hands, wearing a mask, and watching your space. The mask also helps to minimize the amount of virus that you may get if you're exposed to COVID. And there's some data to show that if you're wearing a mask, you're more likely to be asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic. The next stage is if you actually get the virus, and that's in your viral stage that lasts for a couple days before people get symptoms, as well as for about the first week. There is treatment medication for this stage for those who require hospitalizations, including things like a medication called remdesivir, which is an antiviral. There are other medications that are currently being studied and evaluated, including monoclonal antibodies to be able to treat this viral phase. This is also when taking care of your body, eating, sleeping well, being able to drink plenty of fluid make a big difference. After about a week, people kind of go one way or another. Either the body overreacts to the virus and you get a bad cytokine storm or inflammation in the body, or your body settles down and you quickly resolve the infection. For those who uh, get the inflammatory phase, they often require hospitalization, increased oxygen need, 
And there's other treatment at that stage, including medications like dexamethasone, which can decrease your hospitalization and death. However, it's important to note that that's a medication to be taken later in the course and really to be prescribed by your provider, not to be taken early when your body's trying to fight the virus. And then there's this last stage and that's this post-inflammatory stage. So we see people who recover quite quickly and have no symptoms, but we see other people who can have long-term symptoms, including fatigue, weakness, short-term memory loss, heart and lung damage. We're still learning so much about COVID. It's still very new and this longer post-inflammatory phase still remains uh, to be better understood. We also see clots in this time and there's new guidelines over who needs anti-clotting medication in this post-inflammatory phase. So really what you do makes a big difference. Now to prevent getting COVID, taking care of your physical and mental health, wearing a mask to minimize your exposure. Again, avoiding those three th C's and doing the three W's. What we've done in Alaska has made a big difference. And what we're gonna do in the next couple of months is gonna, make, is gonna determine our fate for this pandemic. So when we look at comparable states and we look at our percent of positives that required hospitalizations as well as deaths, we continue to have the lowest percent positives that re uh, required hospitalization and or death, which is fantastic. If we compare us to like states, um, when you look at across the US as well as six peer states, at the end of, let's see, October 8th, 2020, we had 60 deaths. If we were like like states, we would have expected um, 964 hospitalizations and 219 deaths. And if we were like the rest of the US, we would have expected to see 1,308 hospitalizations and 407 deaths. What you've done has made a big difference and what we do this fall and winter will continue to be challenging, but will be really important. This is another study that recently came out from JAMA, a medical journal that looks at what we call excess deaths, more deaths than you would expect at that same time frame. And what they found is that when you get a lot of COVID cases in a short period of time, you have a lot of excess deaths. So this looked at the top 10 states that had the most deaths per capita, and it looked at when those deaths occurred. And you can really see that with that first wave that was a very concentrated wave, we saw higher excess deaths than we saw later in the summer when it was a slower wave. We talked at the beginning a lot about keeping our, you know, flattening that curve and staying under that hospital capacity. And you can see how that first wave really hit hard and overwhelmed the hospital capacity. But the second wave pushed the hospital capacity, but we didn't see the same degree of excess deaths and continue to learn a lot more about the science of, of COVID to be able to have better treatment options. Another thing that we can all do for that hospital capacity is to make sure that we take care of our own physical and mental health. And right now that means getting a flu shot. So here's our current data from Alaska regarding flu. We've done over 91,000 uh, flu vaccines so far, and that's higher than in the 19-2000 in the flu season as well as the 18-19 flu season. Across almost every age group, we've had an increase in flu vaccination, which is fantastic to see, particularly in that 65 and older group. Again, flu can hit any age, but particularly those that are younger, less than six months, or excuse me, six months to 10 years, as well as those over 65 are at higher risk. So anyone over six months of age should get their flu vaccine if they don't have another medical contraindication. I just wanted to bring us back to this last slide, and this is talking a little bit about vaccine and vaccine development. We have to submit our plan to the federal government this Friday regarding vaccine allocation and distribution. It's the beginning of a long series of conversations because we don't have all the data and information about which vaccine may be available as well as which groups it would be best for. And we continue to follow that closely. But we're well on our way. There are many vaccines under clinical trial and we're seeing many come out in a short period of time that look to be safe and efficacious. We'll continue to follow the data closely, but I just wanted people to know this is uh, well underway and we'll continue to make sure that you're involved and know what's happening. So without Alaska, it's so important that we find ways to stay safe, be well, and be kind. What our future generations will say about this pandemic will really be based on what we do in the next few months. And Alaska is amazingly strong in the ways that we're able to work together and creatively find ways to do what's most important to us, but also minimize the impact on COVID as well as our overall health and well-being. So with that, take care and we'll talk soon.